So, this is my house, and I am an artist, and I have to confess that I moved into my neighborhood 15 years ago because it was the only place in East Vancouver I could afford. It was not for the stunning beige architecture displaying the history of the developer's cheapest mass housing options for the emerging suburbs. Even our quaint heritage house in blue there was the smallest, cheapest version possible of a 1930s craftsman style for the working classes. But what our neighborhood did have that made it completely unique was Renfrew Ravine and Still Creek, a hidden jewel in the city. It's a remnant woodland in, in, that happened before the pave everything mentality of city builders. All the other streams that had once flowed in the city had been forced into pipes underground, yet here was Still Creek flowing in the green oasis of Renfrew Ravine. It's seven blocks long and, is, um, and everything else has been covered in pipes. But the ravine had problems. I attended ravine cleanups and was distressed by the amount of garbage we pulled out of this place that should have been a neighborhood treasure. Why were dedicated volunteers pulling up one or two e or even two dumpster loads of garbage at every ravine cleanup? In my mind, I could see art and beauty, not disposable diapers and shopping carts. What, how did we get here from there? Well, the neighbors. There's amazing neighbors. In the, and I joined the ravine committee, and whole families came out to clean up the ravine. And soon we were actually pulling out weeds and planting native plants, uh, as well as pulling out garbage. And then, um, as, as an artist, I said, is there something we can do to inspire the community to change their attitudes and so that they, we don't have as much garbage to clean up? So we created a labyrinth in 2002 out of river boulders to offer the neighbors a walking meditation, meditation surrounded by the sound of birds and wind in the trees. The labyrinth has gone on to become a healing and, and bomb, healing bomb to many people with many varied ways of enjoying it alone and in groups. We also made two mosaic native plant gardens at, at, at one end of the ravine and the other end as a gateway. Neighbors' contributions made them better than I could have imagined. At the south end, a local woodworker made us a bench of a, and a local First Nations carve, carver carved a salmon on the backrest. At the south end, we created a fish mosaic circle to surround a yin-yang bench overlooking the ravine and stream. People had a place to pause and enjoy looking at the ravine. They saw the salmon bench and the pebble mosaic fish and wondered if the stream still had fish in it. But I wanted to see the ravine full of magic, music, and light. So in 2003, we started the Renfrew Ravine Moon Festival. All cultures celebrate harvest. And, <laughs> and since more people in our community speak Chinese at home than English, we linked it to the full moon that marks the Asian Mid-Autumn celebration. The Moon Festival starts with an afternoon harvest fair at Slocan Park, and neighbors fill, show off the best of their gardens. Then, at a twilight lantern walk, fo they follow the giant moon lantern. It takes us along Renfrew Ravine to Renfrew Park. Each year, we have community lantern workshops. Youth volunteers help out on the day of the festival. And for the past three years, a youth committee that pl ha has planned and run the whole Harvest Fair portion of the event. At Renfrew Park, the stream is lit up by hundreds of handmade lanterns and animated by musicians and performers celebrating creativity in the ravine. The Moon Fest means neighbors are walking outside, together, at night, with their families, all speaking different languages, yet enjoying the ravine, the stream, and the art together. It was an amazing moment when we realized we could do something like this together as a community. Soon, the Moon Festival became the signature event of the neighborhood. Getting a volunteer t-shirt became a status symbol at the local high school, and we had to cut off the number of youth volunteers at 200. They sign up within 40 minutes. At the Moon Festival, participants would write their prayers for water as a gesture of hope that one day Still Creek would be healthy enough to support fish and maybe even salmon again, like the old timers remembered in the 1930s. We built on the success of the Moon Festival to create more community art opportunities, such as the Twilight Crow bike rides along Still Creek from Vancouver to Burnaby for people to get to know the watershed, and reflecting Still Creek history, art, and music near the stream, and Still Creek stories where we're currently collecting people's stories about Still Creek. 
fish out of water characters were seen searching for their lost streams. <laughs> and everywhere we made images of fish, salmon lanterns, fish out of water performers, fish on flags, fish on fences, and in mosaics, bringing back in the imagination to where they were once abundant in the real environment. Spirit fish events took place in Burnaby under a freeway overpass where the stream flows ignored in the urban area. Thankfully, many stewards have been active over 30 years in improving water quality and lobbying for infrastructure to improve habitat. And that has resulted in the, the stream being daylit and sections of it being brought above ground, salmon fry releases, a fish ladder at Brunette Dam, giving the river goddess something to celebrate. Then in November 2012, I heard it was happening. In the cool autumn sun, I ran down the hill past the beautiful beige houses, crossed Grandview Highway, feeding cars onto the freeway, past the big box stores, into the area that is a ditch behind Canadian Tire, and there they were. Against all predictions of the experts, the chum salmon had returned. For the first time in 80 years, they were spawning in the Vancouver portion of Still Creek. I thought it was something I was working towards for my children or their children. I didn't really think it would happen in my lifetime. And they've been back for the past two years as well. So even though the experts said it would never happen, they swam through those long stretches of dark pipe pipes under the freeway. We are celebrating our success and we're inspired to envision the whole, e the whole neighborhood as a healthy, vibrant ecosystem that is better for the fish and for us. The salmon have given us a conditional vote of confidence. Let's thank them by continuing to improve not only how we treat the stream, but the whole community and each other.